are the seven worst NBA draft picks taken between 2014 and 2020, the last seven drafts we can fully judge. Why are they so bad? Well, these seven picks were not only in most cases bust, they are far worse. They are seven times when teams could have locked in a championship or even an NBA dynasty if they made the right choice, but instead, the wrong choice cost them a lot more than you would possibly think. So let's start by going in backwards order to the 2014 draft. How are you doing? I'm Mike and in 2014 what if Jabari Parker was never injured is an underrated NBA mystery as in the 2017 season Jabari did average 20.1 points per game and looked like he was on the rise only Jabari would tear his ACL and his basketball career quickly took a nosedive as by the 2021 season at just the age of 25 Jabari averaged just 5.5 points per game and now is playing overseas on top of this even if Jabari reached the top of his potential we have to question if he was ever going to be a championship player star as after signing with the Bulls Jabari stated they don't pay players to play defense which goes against everything we know about basketball as defense quite literally wins championships while drafting Jabari the Bucks missed out on pairing Giannis with Joel Embiid a three-time all-defensive selection as well as an MVP and a man who has never made it out of the second round of the playoffs himself a Giannis and Embiid combination would have given the Bucks an incredibly dynamic MVP front court and Milwaukee may have become a dynasty in the process i'm sorry for jabari parker this may sound harsh but jabari contributed absolutely nothing to the bucks franchise overall as when they lost jabari they got nothing notable in return and milwaukee still won the championship in 2021 in spite of this pick it also has to be noted that Embiid was the consensus number one prospect headed into the 2014 draft before it was revealed that he would be forced to sit out his rookie season with injuries ironic if you are looking for a pick that doesn't involve an injury the jazz taking dante x at number five over Marcus Smart is a nice bonus as Smart would have been a great defensive pairing with Donovan Mitchell in Utah's backcourt. Moving on to the 2015 draft, while Kristaps Porzingis certainly has had a history of injuries himself throughout his NBA career, I think we can all agree that a combination of Porzingis and Embiid would have been devastating for opponents. Unfortunately, with pick number three, the Philadelphia 76ers took Jaleel Okafor, who was the last of a dying breed. In the modern NBA, the key for every player is versatility. Unless Unless you are an elite rim protector and finisher, you better be able to contribute in other ways as a center such as shooting, playmaking, or being able to guard multiple positions on defense. Jaleel Okafor was a low post scoring big man who could not defend at a high level, which meant in college he was an absolute superstar, but in the NBA he struggled to carve out a career. While it's difficult to not blame the Sixers for their lack of foresight, to be fair, Jaleel was both an All-American at Duke as a freshman and he led his team to a national championship as the best player on the roster so you can see why the Sixers thought that they were drafting a winner but instead Philadelphia only got problems as Jaleel was involved in multiple off-court situations including some casual street fights after the Sixers began the season 0-18 the worst of all situations Okafor also had one of the biggest drop-offs we have seen from an NBA rookie, going from averaging 17.5 points and 7 rebounds a game in year 1 to 5.4 points in 2021 at the age of just 25. That year, he should have been approaching his prime, but instead, that was actually his last season in the NBA. Looking down further in this draft, the Nuggets also missed the chance to pair Nikola Jokic with Devin Booker with pick number 7 as Emmanuel Moutier beat out Jaleel Okafor by just one season. Moutier was out of the league by 2022. If Denver had managed to still get the seventh pick in 2016 and keep Jamal Murray, well, Jamal, Book, Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, and Jokic may have created an unbeatable team. This video is all about potential what-if dynasties, and Denver may have had one here. In 2016, wouldn't you know it, we have the Philadelphia 76ers again, as the Boston Celtics took Jalen Brown at pick number three, and he just won the NBA Finals MVP. He is also a three-time All-Star, he's made the All-NBA second team, and he, without a doubt, would have ended up up 
a better long-term pick for both the 76ers and the Lakers, who instead took Ben Simmons and Brandon Ingram. Ingram, though, is an all-star talent, and if the Lakers had drafted Brown, it is likely they would have included him in the trade that brought them Anthony Davis. So again, we are back to the 76ers, who with a current core of Tyrese Maxey, Brown, and Embiid, would have been championship contenders this season, may have been championship contenders for a very long time. Also, during the Jimmy Butler years, they may have won the championship, and that may have had a ripple effect that kept Jimmy in Philadelphia. To be fair to Philly, Ben Simmons was seen as a generational prospect. Some even thought he was going to be the next LeBron James or Magic Johnson. And Ben was great for the Sixers for a bit until his colossal downfall during the 2021 playoffs. Regardless, for Philadelphia, Jalen Brown long-term would have been the right pick, but looking down in the draft, we have an even more devastating mistake. As with pick number 10, the Milwaukee Bucks selected Thon Maker with the hopes that Thon was a superstar in the making. At seven foot one, Thon was seen as a potential unicorn type prospect, a man who could defend the rim, score from the perimeter, and even take his defenders off the dribble. Unfortunately, Thon ended up being able to do absolutely none of those things, instead becoming a clear bust. Having developed Giannis from a man who had the nickname the Greek Freak into just a freak of nature that would become a two-time MVP, we can see why the Milwaukee Bucks thought they could hit another home run with Thon. However, the biggest mark Thon Maker left on the NBA was a huge conspiracy, as it has been said that Thon Maker lied about his age in order to get drafted and that he is actually several years older than he is claiming. Maker never averaged more than five points per game on the Bucks and was traded in just his third season with the team. Meanwhile, after striking out on Joel Embiid, the Bucks could have found a different all-star center in Demonis Sabonis, who has been a three-time NBA all-star and was selected third-team all-NBA the last two seasons. Sabonis has also done the impossible. He helped the Kings make the playoffs after a 16-season playoff drought. It is a definite. Sabonis and his versatile play at the center position would have fit perfectly with Giannis in the front court. In two different situations, the Bucks could have had the best front court in the NBA. Instead, we're left wondering what could have been. So are the Philadelphia 76ers, as in the 2017 draft. We were, as fans, supposed to be given a point guard rivalry that lasted a generation. Markel Fultz was seen as a potential superstar with averages of 23.2 points, 5.9 assists, and 5.7 rebounds per game at Washington, while Lonzo Ball was seen by many as the next Jason Kidd. The Ringer's draft guide stated the 6'6 Ball has the potential to be the best passer in the NBA, a transcendent playmaker who makes his teammates better. At Zoe's introductory press conference with the Lakers, Magic Johnson would even go so far as to ask him. So Lonzo, just leave me one or two records, okay? That's, that's it. All right, all right, don't break all my records. Just... I, I want your grandfather, just let him leave me one, okay? Which, looking back, seems absolutely insane. As while both Fultz and Lonzo have suffered with injuries, even when they have been healthy, neither player has approached all-star status. Meanwhile, the real star of this draft was waiting to be taken at pick number three, as Jason Tatum would have been an absolutely game-changing pick for the 76ers franchise. One that could have won them multiple championships and had them currently sitting as a dynasty in progress. What's worse is that with Ben Simmons running the point guard before his tremendous fall off. In this draft, the Sixers needed a wing, but instead chose a point guard in Markel Fultz. What's even worse than that is Philadelphia traded up with Boston to land the number one pick to take Fultz, while Boston received a pick that became pick number 14 in the 2019 draft, meaning Philly traded a pick to take the worst play. What's even worse, again, is that Tatum wasn't even in consideration for Philadelphia at all. It was later revealed that head coach Brett Brown loved Jonathan Isaac. Angelo liked him too, but he was also intrigued by Kansas wing Josh Jackson and Kentucky point guard De'Aaron Fox. He, Brian Colangelo, had all three ranked ahead of Tatum. The Celtics deserved their 2024 championship as they were the only ones to see Tatum's potential. In seven seasons in the NBA, Tatum is already a five-time All-Star, three-time member of the first team All-NBA, and of course, an NBA champion. For the 2018 draft, everyone missing on Luka Doncic is easy as the Mavericks with pick number five were somehow able to trade with the Hawks at pick number three to grab the best young talent we have seen in the NBA since LeBron James. Luka has made the All-NBA first team five times in his first six seasons. He just led the Mavericks to the NBA Finals where they lost, but they had a clearly worse roster. Somehow, not only did the Suns take DeAndre Aiden at pick number one over Luka, but also the Kings took Marvin Bagley at pick number two.
two and watched as Bagley refused to play defense and so Sacramento traded him before his rookie contract was over. Not great, not great at all, but diving deeper into this draft, we also find another rotten pick as drafting 13th, the Los Angeles Clippers took Jerome Robinson over Michael Porter Jr. Headed into college, Porter Jr. was seen as a potential number one overall pick and then his stock plummeted as Michael Porter Jr. was only able to play in three games in his college career, which meant that teams feared that back injuries were going to ruin him as a player in the league. But at pick number 13, Michael would have been very well worth the risk as a boom or bust prospect. Porter Jr. helped the Nuggets win the championship in 2023 and averaged around 17 points per game the last two seasons, while he also played in 81 games this year, squashing any recent injury concerns. Jerome Robinson, after averaging just 3.4 points per game as a rookie, was traded by the Clippers in year two to the Wizards, who ended up waving him after 21 games. In 2024, after a stint in the G League, Jerome did pop up with the Warriors, but he averaged just 1.4 points per game. It is very hard to imagine that Paul George and Kawhi Leonard couldn't have benefited from the shooting of Michael Porter Jr. as the Kawhi Leonard Clippers era can only be considered a failure at this point in time. Five down, two left to go, and the 2019 draft is unique on this list as really, it was a bad draft day trade that gives us the worst decision made here. When the Lakers traded for Anthony Davis, they sent New Orleans a package that included Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, and this number four pick that could have set the Pelicans up for the foreseeable future. Pick number four would become future all-star Darius Garland. However, in this 2019 draft, the Pels made the decision to trade back with the Hawks for picks number eight, 17, and 35, where they landed Jackson Hayes, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, and D.D. Luzat. All three of those players combined do not equal the all-star talent that Darius Garland is. With Garland, the Pelicans could have had the playmaker they have been looking for, as they have tried out both Lonzo Ball and Devontae Graham at the lead guard spot without much success, and in the 2024 season, Brandon Ingram, as a small forward slash power forward, led the roster in assists per game with 5.7. Garland would have been the perfect player to add to the Pels. He has shown himself to not only be a superb talent, but also he is a very willing distributor. The Pels' current core of CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Herb Jones, and of course Zion Williamson needs a great passer on this roster. They need those easy looks, and Darius Garland runs the offense as a true point. Instead, Garland fell to the Cavs at five, and at pick number four, the Hawks took DeAndre Hunter, who has been a solid wing player for them, but has not been the all-star talent Darius Garland has shown to be. Finishing things off here, in the 2020 draft, James Wiseman at number two over LaMelo Ball is an all-time mistake by the Golden State Warriors. In theory, Wiseman was everything Golden State was looking for. A 7'1 center with elite athleticism who the team was comparing to a young Wilt Chamberlain? What could possibly go wrong? Well, after watching James Wiseman play in the NBA, after watching him average just 7.1 points per game for a 14-win Pistons team this season, we can question if Wiseman would have even succeeded in Wilt Chamberlain's era himself. On paper, James Wiseman made perfect sense. Unfortunately, his lack of basketball IQ and awareness, along with a lack of work ethic, it always comes back to a lack of work ethic when you have these types of God-given talents. Has made James Wiseman one of the biggest busts of all time. Meanwhile, for the Hornets, LaMelo Ball has already been named an all-star. He is their franchise player, and this pick has looked worse as the years have gone on, as at least in 2020, with Steph, Clay, and Jordan Poole, we could understand why Golden State did not want another guard. Now, though, it looks like Clay Thompson wants out of Golden State, and even if he stays, he is not the same player he once was due to his age. While, of course, Jordan Poole was punched off of the roster. If the Warriors did have LaMelo on their current roster, even if he wasn't a perfect fit, they could have used him as a trade asset to extend their dynasty run, but alas, baby Wilt will haunt them forever. And to end this video off with a bang, if we look at pick number 10, we find that Phoenix took Jalen Smith over who could have been their longtime point guard in Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton showed in Sacramento that he could fit next to another lead guard with De'Aaron Fox. And then with Indiana this season, he showed that he could be the best player on a team that made it all the way to this year's Eastern Conference Finals. While a Tyrese Halliburton and Devin Booker backcourt would have been very shaky defensively, the Suns are missing a pure point guard, a distributor to feed Booker and Durant the ball, and what's even worse is that in trading for Bradley Beal, Phoenix gave away their 2024, 2026, 2028, and 2030 first round picks to Washington, which means if Phoenix slips and becomes a bad 
team. They don't even have their own picks. This could be a nightmare scenario for Phoenix in a very short time. So there we have it, guys. Thank you for watching. I want to know what you think down below. What was the worst pick out of these seven? Or do you have your own pick that you think was even more terrible? If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss another video. If you're still here, I think you will really enjoy this video on Luka Doncic right here in the top left. Or you'll enjoy this video on the right that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music.